All right, so we're gonna build a pair of leggings. I'm gonna do a real quick video just showing you how to, I do my measurements when I'm building a pair of chaps. Uh, these in particular are gonna be chinks. I have not done a pair in quite some time, so we'll probably make a mistake, but that's okay because it's for our friend Scott Summerlot of Scott Summerlot Originals. And if you're looking for any kind of silver work, gun engraving, spurs, anything like that, uh, give him a call. He's on Instagram, so you can check him out. But he's been waiting on these, not very long, uh, two, three years. And so we're gonna get these going for him and uh, see if we can get them knocked out by 2021. That way he can get to using them. So anyway, what we're gonna do, I wanted to do a real quick video just showing you how I lay out my measurements for the body. We're not gonna, this isn't gonna build it, be an entire chat build video. I don't know, we might do some more uh, little clips of it, but mainly I wanna show you kind of some of the measurement stuff because when it comes to building the chaps and leggings, the measurements are some of the hardest things to uh, kind of mm. figure out. Usually that's where most people have trouble. So what I like to do, if you've got a big enough side, is go ahead and cut the butt in first so that you're getting the best quality part of the hide. We may have to encroach up into the neck some, but we wanna to try to stay back here in the butt with the first leg. And uh, you just wanna kinda of eyeball your hide and make sure that you've got enough room to get that other leg. So I take the measurements that I take on somebody is gonna be their waist measurement, and that's gonna be the measurement below their belt. And that way, you've got an actual waist measurement, not a belt measurement because the chaps are going over clothing the belt and so to speak. So then I'll take an inseam measurement and that's from the crotch to the floor on a pair of long leggings or from the crotch to where you want your fringe to stop uh, on a pair of chinks. And traditionally I like my fringe to stop at the very top of the vamp on a pair of boots. So wherever your vamp comes up the front of your foot and then ties into the boot top, that's where the, the, the fringe should stop. Uh, chinks are a little bit shorter, but they're not real short. If you don't have enough length on a pair of chinks, they won't break across the knee when a man's riding in the saddle or a person's riding in the saddle. And so you need that length. So they're not really short. They should, the fringe should not stop at the knee. You need that length to protect that knee when you're going through brush and that kind of thing. And so they're not too much shorter, but usually the top of the vamp where it ties into the front of the boot top is where I would stop my measurement when I measure somebody. Then we'll take an out seam and that's gonna be from on the outside of the hip underneath the belt all the way to that same measurement around the ankle where that boot top ties in to the vamp. And then you'll take a top thigh measurement, a mid thigh measurement, and then right above the knee measurement. And I just call that a knee measurement, but it's actually right above the knee. And then I usually take a lower leg measurement, which is gonna be from either the floor or on a pair of chinks where your fringe stops to um, right above the knee or right above where your knee measurement was taken. That's gonna give you an idea of kind of where the knee is on that pair of leggings, which can be a valuable piece of information on certain builds. So it's just good to go ahead and get that while the customer's standing there. And those are the measurements I take. Now the first two that I use when I'm laying out a, a chap, this is a very rough pattern. I don't use much on it except for where my fringe starts here. And then this drop right here. You can do this any way you want to, but the inseam and the outseam are the two measurements that we're gonna focus on right now that's gonna help us to determine the basic shape of the body so that we have enough cut here going into the crotch area so that these chaps will ride on the frame of the person properly. Because if you don't have this cut properly here, the chaps can ride too low or uh, you'll have too much of a gap in the leg in there. And so we'll, I'll show you exactly how that kind of pans out. So his, his uh, inseam measurement is 26 to 27 inches, somewhere around there, and the outseam is 34. The outseam is the one I use first, so 34 inches. So I'll put that to the very top of this pattern, and then we'll ride down envisioning where the outside of his leg would be from hip to floor, basically, or hip to boot. And so I'll put 34 at the top of the chap, and then we'll come here and find a pencil. And we'll come here, we'll do that 34 inches, running right down the side of the chap body and I'm going to put a mark at 34. Now we'll take, don't let this move. It's usually a good idea to put something heavy on your pattern so it doesn't move around. Now we'll take the inseam and he's 26 to 27. It's not that critical but we want to get close. So if we go to 27 you can see where our mark is here if we were to take a straight edge and run that across level with the top of the chap, you can see that he's a little bit lower, but not bad. So even if we went up to 26, 
here. And on my pattern, like I said, you, your pattern is going to be different, but basically this line here is what I'm using as my reference because this is going to fold over. I, I roll my my piece here on the top of the chap where it goes uh, into the crotch area there. I roll that so that it's it's not just a seam, a hard seam there. It's just a little more comfortable. But if we go up to 26, you can see that it's just a little bit higher. And that is basically level with the top of the chap. And you can see that it's a little bit higher. But we can also go to 27 on him. So what's critical here is that if you had somebody say their inseam, probably wouldn't be this way, but I have had it happen many a times where say they're, say we did it at 22. And that was their inseam measurement to the same mark around their ankle where the fridge is going to stop. There you can see how much longer of space we have right here. If we were just to leave it and just use the outseam measurement and cut this pair of leggings out, this crotch area is not does not have a deep enough cut into it, and the top of this chap is going to ride really low on the person. And depending on the person's build, they can actually just slip right off of the person when they're walking. It's not going to stay on. And so some things you can do to help with that is using a one inch back belt that they can run through the center belt loop on their pants to keep them up. But if we're a custom craftsmen, why not just go ahead and build them correctly so that they fit so they don't have to do that, but they can if they want to. And so what I would do on a situation like that, comparing our out seam to our in seam and noticing that gap is I would pull this down to where we're closer. That would be a really big difference there. But just to show you the reasoning, it, then we would need to actually cut that that down deeper. So say we were only a little bit off at 24, we'd pull that down there and then make our mark so that these two measurements are closer on the bottom and that would tell you how much you need to cut out of this area here. I have had it to where there, you do need a very extreme cut here because the person's pelvis is so deep. And so just the way they're built, their out seam and their in seam are so different that if you don't do that, the chap won't fit them correctly. So, but in general, most people, it's gonna be pretty close. You should be okay. So on Scott here, he's a pretty average build, but we're gonna, we're gonna split the difference and do 26 and a half, just since we got a little play from the measurements that I took on him. So that's the out seam there. Out seam, in seam, they're basically level. And so now what I'll do is I will trace the top of this pattern off. Again, I don't use this exact. We're gonna cut it out a little while. This here, I will use exact on my pattern. Now, I don't know what your pattern looks like, but you can do, do it however you want. But we'll draw that in there. Draw the top of that, back side of the yoke. This angle here is what sets my fringe. So we'll start fringing from the top here and then fringe around. So this angle is important. And then this side here. And then on mine, I go ahead and put my marks for where my fringe starts right here. And then we'll put mark here and a mark here. I don't do these, these slots anymore. Well, I do, I can, but on this one, we're not going to. We're actually gonna do tooled panels. So I'm just marking about the positioning of where that plaque needs to go. And we'll position that in a minute. So once you've got the top end of this drawn in, just around here, we're not gonna draw this yet. What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna slide this down amongst our marks that we just made and try to keep it straight along this outside edge right here. I'm not real worried about what that's doing over there. We're just trying to get close here. And you don't have to be dead on either mark. Usually if I hit one or the other, that's fine with me. We're just trying to get close. And so that should be the proper length for Mr. Summer Latte. We'll come around here and I'm gonna stop about right there. Step against your pattern. So that will tell me how long this legging needs to be. Okay, and then here's my top of my yoke or my uh, side panel, here's the bottom. And then we're gonna use this panel and on th this chap pattern that we used, it's old and it doesn't fit this particular side panel. So we're, we made a mark there where whereabouts they go. And so now we'll kind of just finagle this little dude in here at the right angle. Because we're gonna need to know where our leg 
straps are going to be so we can tell how wide to make it for his leg measurements. So we're going to kind of go from here. Now I'm going to trace this off. And this is where our actual buckle straps will be mounted to. Okay, so we've got our side plaque. Now his top thigh is 27 and a half inches. We're gonna take an inch and a half off of that. So we need to do, you gotta leave a little bit of a gap for the buckle and the strap. So I usually do about an inch and a half. I'm surprised I remembered that. It's been so long since I did chaps, but whatever. 26 inches is what we'll do. And you can fudge this a bunch. You don't have to get real critical here, but it needs to be close because you do have some adjustment in the buckle straps. If you're doing a zipper, you've got to be a lot a lot closer. I'm going to put the mark 26 at the top, and then I'm going to put a mark out here. That's where the top buckle needs to be attached on that side. And then his mid thigh is 26, so we'll go 24 and a half, somewhere around there. He's a perfectly uniform human specimen. 21, 19 and a half. Oh, wow. Got weird there at the knee. So on our lower leg measurement, this is where this will help. As you can come in, the lower leg is going to be the out seam from where the fringe stops to right above the knee. So what we'll do is we'll 21, is we'll, no, 18 is what I've got. So I'm going to put a real light mark right there. That is about where his knee is. It's right in this area. Right below that is his knee. So now I know where his knee is. So now when I lay this measurement out, I can be sure that I'm not canted one way or another. So 19 and a half. I'm probably just gonna, yeah, you know, 19 and a half. So I'm gonna put a mark. So obviously what we have here is, if you look at these marks, you got this knee is way in here and then these two top thighs our way, our top thigh, mid thigh are way out here. So you've got quite a bit of gap. So what I usually do is the main thing is to make sure, because most guys aren't gonna suck the knee down tight or the mid thigh. This top one, they may make it a little tighter or whatever, but most people don't wear their leggings super tight. But what I wanna do is make sure that I've got plenty of room. So if I was to just take a line here and work my way towards this way, to where it's just a nice clean line up to this mark. And then I can tie into where this comes around. I used to cut this chap where I cut this out here. What happens with chinks is you don't have a zipper and you don't have a bottom strap or anything like that to keep the bottom pulled around so that the chap wears correctly. And so if you cut this out, you end up with this just flopping out as you're riding. It won't wrap around. It won't hang correctly and stay in the right position. All that will just kind of flip out from behind your leg and fender. And so if you keep that in there, that's the only thing that's keeping it pulled around and it'll really help that chap to wear and break in more correctly. So I leave that all there now so that when you, when you do pull that chap tight, it's gonna stay in position. And then I'll just carry this back in here and just I just start creating a line that looks nice up to the top thigh, which is going to be my main focus. I know the mid thigh is out a little bit further, but we've got a little bit of room to play with. And the knee, as we can tell, there's a big gap between the knee and the mid thigh. So depending on where I measured that, and depending on how they actually land on him when he wears them, um, I'm not worried about that difference right there. I'd prefer that line to be in here, but the, it's better to be out there actually so that you get some gap. And so we're splitting the difference between these two measurements. This top thigh is the main one. You want to be pretty close on that one. And uh, I really feel like you could take measurements on a man and just take the top thigh and the out seam and the in seam, and you can get pretty darn close to where they fit pretty right. But I like to have more measurements than I need just to make sure that they're going to fit correctly because having to do an alteration on a pair of chaps you just finished with eats up all your profit. So try to take all the measurements you can uh, when they're there. And so we've gotten that. Now I'm going to trace in. Well, actually, I'm going to wait to trace that in. No, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to trace this in here. 
so we know about where this this yoke is going to be. Because when we cut this out, like I said, this excess right here um, will roll this to the inside. You can roll it to the inside or roll it to the outside. Um, I like to usually pink that with a little, um, you can either use pinking shears or you can use a, a half round punch and scallop this top edge and then roll it to the outside. I think it gives it a neat little accent. And, uh, and I've got about a three quarter inch, yeah, three quarter inch fold over is what I do all the way down. It makes it nice. So that's the body right there. And we're gonna trust that that's gonna fit Mr. Scott Summer Latte. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut this out and then we will go ahead and flip it and cut one out just like it. And then we'll have to punch some holes and stuff to line all this up. But we've got the main body correctly sized. So we went off our out seam, our in seam comparatively to make sure that we've got this cut here in the crotch area correct and we get the length right, then we can work on the width as far as wrapping around the leg. That's really all there is to it. Like I said, you, you could probably just take a top thigh, end seam and out seam and be good and build a pair of leggings for somebody. But if I have the man standing there, it takes no more time to get your end seam, out seam, top thigh, mid thigh, knee and lower leg. And remember the lower leg measurement is just for a knee reference so that you know about where the knee is actually gonna be on the body of the chap which will help you space out any kind of buckle situation or if you're doing step ins or anything like that. And we'll get into some more videos like that as we get further along. Like I said, I haven't built a pair of leggings in a long time and we're making these for Scott. And so I thought that that measurement thing is the main thing I have to offer when it comes to building chaps. There's a lot of people out there that are way better at building leggings than I am. Spend a lot more time doing it and kind of focus on that. And so if, um, they may have a better way of getting a measurement or using those measurements, but that's how I've done it for years. We used to build quite a few leggings. Now we don't build very many, but we may start building a few more here and there. But anyway, that's all we've got. I appreciate y'all. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you're looking for anything else tutorial wise or leather work wise, or looking for some pattern packs, be sure and visit dgsaddlery.com. Thank y'all very much. We'll see y'all in the next video.